Dull watermelon, apple pie, slushy, butterscotch, coffee, fruit loops. Okay, I'm not just listing off delicious things for the sake of it here. Those are just a few of the many, many flavours you can get in one of these. Vapes. But maybe I don't even have to tell you that, because stats show that quite a few young Aussies have, at the very least, given it a go. Even though, yep, in Australia, it is illegal to buy one of these if you're under 18. Hey yo, nicotine addiction check. You just literally see tens of kids like sitting in a circle, just all sharing one, and it's crazy. It's colourful, it, it smells nice, and they just want to be cool. They're addicting, and they taste nice and smell good, so I think that's like a big factor. You know when you're having withdrawals, it's miserable, you just feel grumpy, and you get anxious. But this is kind of a path we've been down before, and by we, I mean the world because these often contain the same super addictive ingredient as these. I'm talking about nicotine. It's a chemical that's found naturally in the tobacco plant. Tobacco leaves have been rolled up into neat and convenient little filtered paper packages and mass manufactured since the 1880s. But cigarettes became really popular during World War II, when they were part of the rations provided to soldiers, including Aussies, to relieve stress and make them feel at home. Oh, and also because cigarette brands saw it as a good marketing tactic and donated them. Both at home and abroad, Chesterfield gives what they want in a smoke. And so when the war ended, three in four Aussie men and one in four Aussie women were regular smokers. Yeah, that's huge. Huge. And the rest of the world was about the same, if not worse. From there, cigarettes were pretty much everywhere you looked. Naturally, this includes the cigarettes served on these planes. According to this survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. So why so popular? Try one of my cools. Well, good advertising played a huge part in it. You don't see many wild stallions anymore. And so did Hollywood. Mr. Bond. James Bond. Smoking became a symbol of rebellion, oh, no. independence and coolness, basically. Tell me about it, Stur. An image it'd surely never lose, right? Except then it did. Because I guess dying's not that cool? But it definitely didn't happen overnight. The first big studies about the health effects of cigarettes came out in the 1950s. They are... Oh, while the warnings were enough to freak some people out, like that other guy, health experts came up against a lot of opposition. So far, what are the conclusions reached by your organisation? To single out smoking as a causal agent is, on the evidence to date, completely unjustified. But for a long time, the very rich and very powerful big tobacco industry was like, hey, don't worry about it, smoking's fine, or at least it's not going to kill you. In fact, companies actively worked to discredit any attempts to reduce smoking, and they just kept on changing the way that they marketed cigarettes to people. It's a good tobacco. Mild, quality all the way. What are your views about smoking in this current anti-smoking campaign? Oh, well, I've been smoking since I was 10 and it doesn't appear to do me any harm. I don't go along with this cancer bit. I just won't go along with it until it is actually proven and it hasn't been proven yet. Uh, yeah. Have you tried to get your children to give it up? Well, they'd only laugh at me. i so say, you're old-fashioned, Mum, so there would be a bit right too. But finally, after decades of research, there was enough undeniable information that the media and the general public couldn't ignore. And the evidence was also right there in front of people, as millions got sick and died from smoking-related illnesses. By the time the 90s and noughties came around, the whole image thing around smoking was finally changing for good. Oh! I'm smoking, I'm smoking, I'm... And governments like Australia's created new laws and education programs. We got warnings and plain packages, increased taxes on cigarettes, banned ads and put out anti-smoking campaigns. Every cigarette is doing new damage. 
And eventually we made it illegal for people to smoke in lots of public places, including restaurants, workplaces, music venues and pubs. In five minutes, we'll no longer be able to smoke cigarettes in a licensed area in Victoria. But keep in mind, that last law only came in around 2007 in most states and territories. That's about 50 years after those first public health warnings. In the past few decades, there's been a huge drop in the number of Aussies that smoke daily to about 11%. And that is how we get to these. The first commercially successful e-cigarette was created by a Chinese company in 2003 to help people quit smoking. So this one is Mongo. E-cigarettes, aka vapes, have obviously changed a lot since then. And I don't mean just in the way they look, I mean who makes them. Over the past 10 years, big tobacco companies have invested billions of dollars into popular vape companies, as well as creating their own brands and making sure vapes sell around the world. And then there's good old addictive nicotine. It is illegal to buy vapes in Australia containing nicotine unless you have a prescription. But some researchers have tested vapes bought in Aussie stores and found that a lot of them do contain nicotine, even when it doesn't say so on the label. Some of the things of concern um, that we have found is that the nicotine concentrations are very rarely the concentration that they say on the label. We also have found a number of products that contain some of the banned substances in Australia. Yeah, vapes also have other chemicals in them to add all those flavours or make for a smoother hit. But since the vape industry is still kind of new and isn't very well regulated, most people don't know exactly what they're inhaling. Young people have actually been sold a lie that e-cigarettes contain just harmless water vapour, but they don't. They contain a lot of um, mixed chemicals. While some health experts and advocates say that vaping can help some people quit smoking, no one's sure what the long-term health effects are yet, because vaping just hasn't been around for that long. <laughs> no one's really been using them for more than a few years, so what vaping does over five or ten years is unknown. And there have already been reports of people getting really sick from vaping-related lung problems. I was so sick, I could look so innocent, but like, it could kill you, it's so scary. Vaping brands have also been accused of doing what cigarette brands used to do so well, marketing their products to young people. In fact, this big company was even sued by US state governments for doing just that. We had an internal memo, and in that memo, it says, we need to get children hooked young, and then we'll have a customer for life. But while it is illegal to advertise vapes in Australia in the same way it's illegal to advertise cigarettes, social media can subtly get around those laws. It's just one of the vaping issues Australia's Federal Health Minister says he's planning to get onto early in 2023, which could mean updates to laws around where these can be seen and sold. We can't just rest on those laurels from 10 years ago because we've seen the tobacco industry innovate, innovate around ways in which they can continue to market their deadly products. So when it comes to vaping and people's health, let's all hope that history doesn't repeat itself.